Dicamba has become the most difficult issue the Arkansas State Plant Board and University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture weed scientists have faced in years. I've only been director for about a little over a year. Uh, I've only been at the plant board since 2002 and there's never been anything in that short term tenure to compare. This weed control technology has led to unprecedented levels of concern due to complaints of volatility and drift damage. Never, never anything like this. And you know, there's been comments folks make that, well, you know, this is a lot like Roundup Ready. Well, no, I, I came through the Roundup Ready era and I can assure you it's not like Roundup Ready. And, you know, Mr. Wildey pointed out today, I think there's 380 uh, complaints of glyphosate over the last 21 years in the state of Arkansas. And here we are today uh, approaching, we're right at 900 uh, complaints on, on dicamba. So this is definitely something that is quite different. And also I've never seen an issue like this that's been so divisive in terms of the agricultural community as well as the non-agricultural community at this point. In response, Governor Hutchinson appointed an 18-member dicamba task force made up of farmers and industry representatives to examine the issue. The panel held its first meeting August 17th at the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute. Arkansas County rice and soybean farmer Terry Dabbs is a member of the task force. While the majority of the drift damage is concentrated in Mississippi and Crittenden counties, the Farm Bureau State Board member says finding a solution for next year will be difficult. I don't know that there is a solution or an answer. It's a very serious problem. Uh, it's going to be a difficult one to solve. You know, we're still waiting on some test results to come in. Everything we heard Monsanto say that all the tests are not in yet that they ran. Uh, so it's going to be a tight window here to get it all in. Plant Board Director Terry Walker says most farmers are following label directions when applying the herbicide, but its volatility is still proving to be unmanageable. We get reports of people that have done everything right in making the application, but still we're seeing problems associated with some of those applications. And so I'm concerned about unknowns, the unmanageability. If we can come up with solutions or some way to predict how the product or any product is going to behave in a certain set of conditions, then there's a degree of manageability. The challenge for soybean and cotton farmers in particular is controlling pigweed, which has become resistant to Roundup and other technologies. Dicamba has been proven effective, but its volatility and tendency to drift off target has resulted in numerous complaints of damage to row crops and non-farm vegetation. University of Arkansas Extension weed scientists have conducted field trials to determine how it will perform in a variety of conditions and say it needs to remain a tool for farmers to use. There's multiple technologies that we have out there today and uh, somehow we have to have it where the various technologies can coexist. Uh, we talk about dicamba. Dicamba is an excellent tool for us in terms of pigweed management and it really brings another tool to place in the toolbox and it's all about diversity when you come to managing pigweed, managing resistance. So we need the dicamba tool. There's no doubt about that. We just need a product that also is going to stay put and allow us to successfully manage a weed within the field and not damage neighboring vegetation. The task force will meet at least once more and will hopefully make a recommendation on how to address the issue to the plant board by October.